Hey guys, I'm Stefan, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to give you a full review and overview of Piano Adventures free sight reading coaching app. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. Also, I now offer online piano lessons. If you're looking for one, there's going to be information in the description below. To keep it very short, if you are familiar with Piano Adventures, it's one of the most popular piano method books. They have lots of sight reading books for each level. And basically now they have an app which kind of substitutes the book, but it's free and everyone can use it. And it's actually a really great app. It has some pros and cons that I'm going to talk about in a minute, but let me just tell you what the sight reading is about. So Piano Adventures is from complete beginner, never played piano to around grade two, three level. And it, the standard series goes from primer to level five and the adult series is book one and book two. And then you can go on to book three, four and five. So even if you are doing the adult version, you can still progress or transition onto the the standard version, which is for kids, the three, four, five, because the adult only goes up to book two. So each book comes with a sight reading book, which looks like that. And basically these books have a bunch of exercises which relate to the pieces that you learn in the method book. So if you have, for example, a piece called Energy Code in the method book, then you're going to get um, a sight reading exercise called Energy Code in the sight reading book and it has five different variations, one for each day. So day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. So you get one exercise for every single day and they are not very long, just two, three lines or one page and very big letters so it's easy to see. And basically the more you do, the better your sight reading is going to be, but because they are related to the actual pieces that you learn in the method book. So anyway, that's the idea of the books and these cost around five pounds each. Now the app, I just found out about it. I don't know when it was actually released, but it's for Android and Apple. So you can download it onto your phone and onto your iPad. Now I would strongly urge everybody to download it onto an iPad and you'll see why it's basically impossible to see it on a phone. I know there are so many piano apps which you can use on phones, but I just think it's way too small to actually see it easily and be able to play very quickly from it, especially when it's a rolling score, which is even more confusing because it keeps jumping back and forth, whilst on the iPad you can actually see it uh, as a full sheet without having to page and jump and things like that. So anyway, the, the app you're looking for is the PA Coach, so Piano Adventures Sight Reading Coach, and it's free to download from the Apple Store and the Google Store, and it requires internet connection while you're using it. It's not going to allow you to get into the app without the internet connection. What you need to know about the app is how they advertise it is that teachers can access all the exercises in the app for free, but you have to pay $2 for each student that you register to your account. But when you actually sign up for the app, there's no verification whether you're a teacher or not. So even if you're a student, you can sign up as a teacher and you can use the app without someone assigning you pieces. However, if you are a teacher and you want to use this in your studio or your lessons, then it's an amazing tool because you can send out um, exercises to your students and they can actually record what they did and you can listen back and see their mistakes and give feedback to them. Now, the biggest advantage of the sight reading app is that it gives you real-time instant feedback. So as you play the exercise, it records you and then it shows you where you made the mistakes and it gives you a score for rhythm and pitch. So you are going to know whether you made most of the mistakes in the rhythm or pitch. Obviously it has limitations. I get to that in a minute, but that's how the app works. So basically that means that anyone can use it for free as long as you sign up for a teacher account and then you can access all the exercises. Now, every exercise that's in the sight reading books is also available in the app. It's a little bit strange to me why they would charge you for the books, but then give you the app for free. I know obviously it doesn't have any paper cost or shipping cost, but still 
the books are quite expensive if you want to get all of them like the five levels would be around 25 pounds and this one is for free and it even gives you feedback plus you can listen to the exercises after you try them to check your answers so i'm going to turn around now and give you a close-up and just show you what you can do in the app and how it works test it out in a couple of ways, see how it picks up on mistakes and how the scoring works. And also I want to point out some of the disadvantages or weaknesses of the app. So this is what you see when you sign into the app. Then you can see your students and you can see the content. Now, if I click on the content, then here are all the books that are available in the app. And as you can see, there is no adult book in it because there's no adult sight reading book printed separately, but you've got the accelerated one, which is for older beginners, and you've got the standard ones. Now, even if you're an adult beginner and you're using the adult piano adventures method, it has very limited sight reading exercises. So this app is going to be useful to you to, even though it follows, the standard basic piano adventures method. It doesn't matter what piece you play, as long as you play more and more pieces, your sight reading is going to get better. So the primer would basically be the first half of book one of the adult book. Level one would be still level one of the adult book and 2A, 2B and 3A is the combination of book two in the adult. And when you finish book two adult piano adventures, you would go to 3B4. Now, if you're again an adult beginner, or if you're a fast learner, you, you don't need to do the primer one, two, three. You could instead do the accelerated number one and accelerated number two, and then move on to 3A and 3B. So let's try maybe level 3A. Now the first piece in the book is Sakura, and then here is uh, Sakura as well and it gives you five different exercises. Now let's go to day one. And now here is the sheet music. And now you can see the sheet music in one bit. But if you do this on your phone, then it's only going to show you one line at a time. And as you progress, I think you can actually turn this here. You can go into scrolling. So that's what you would see on the phone. And as you play, it's going to swap back and forth when it refreshes the line. And I think that's really confusing, it's distracting. So if you can use the full page layout because it's much better for sight reading than having to jump back and forth with your eyes because you already have to look up and down on the piano keys and the sheet music. So what you can see here is the exercise. There is the speed and here is the play button so you can listen to it. Then you can go back to the beginning. You've got the record button when you're going to start trying the exercise. I'll show you that in a second. Then you can change the tempo. If it's too fast, you can go slower, you can go faster. Then you have backing. Here, you can keep the metronome on if you want to. It's actually a good idea because otherwise you might lose count, especially if you're not very good with rhythm. And then you've got some details about the piece. And then you've got the scrolling and you can mark sections if you want to practice a certain section. So let's see what happens when I try this out. So I'm going to press record and then it gives you two bars counting. That's enough time for you to, to actually um, get into the, the speed and internalize the tempo. And then when you're ready and you know where to start, that's when you press the button. Because once you press the button, you're not gonna have time to figure out the starting notes and starting fingers. If there's someone else to press the button for you, it's even better. And then it gives you a score in the end. So now it tells me that my pitch was 100%, but the rhythm was 97%, the length played was 100%, and my final score is 99%. Now, if I exit this, you can see this big green line here. 
And the green line, if it's green and straight, it means you were playing the right notes in rhythms. And if you make mistakes, the green line is gonna go up and down. And if it goes yellow, it's a small mistake. If it goes red, it's a really bad mistake. So that's how you can kind of tell where you made the mistake. Now let's try to play this once again. I'm going to play it with mistakes in the pitch and also in the rhythm. Now I got a 75 score and then the rhythm score is 60 and the pitch score is 92. Now I would not agree that the pitch score is 92. I made far more mistakes in the pitch than 8%. But now if I take this off and you have a look here, you can actually see where the red was really strong. That's where I played some wrong pitches and you can see when it goes up, I think that means you're sharp and when it goes down, it means you're flat, and that's when the tempo goes fast and slow as well. Now, this is basically what it does, and you can save this exercise, and you can submit it to your teacher, or you can save it for yourself, and you can try it later on and compare your progress. And the more stars you get, you know, the better you are, and it gives you motivation to do really well, because you can try it again, and you can aim for 100% accuracy. Now, the amazing thing about the app is that you don't actually need a teacher to do this. You can do all the exercises, and if you do them really well, you're going to get a 100% score or 95% or above 90%. I would say when it comes to sight reading, anything above 80%, 85% is really good. The biggest drawback is that you don't actually know what mistakes you made. So I can see some lines going up and down here, but it doesn't tell me which note I played wrong and what I actually played instead. And it doesn't tell me what I did wrong in the rhythm. I can just see that at this section there was something wrong, but I don't know if I was holding it for longer or holding it for shorter. And obviously when you make mistakes and if you don't know what the mistakes are, you just know at what spot you made the mistake, it's very hard to fix it. Obviously, if you listen to the actual recording of the exercise, you can always compare it. And if your ears are good, you can pick out the mistake. But what if you can't? And this is where the teacher becomes absolutely essential because they can point out especially small rhythmic problems. Or if you start on the wrong note, for example, and the pattern you follow is good, but all the notes are wrong because you started off on the wrong note. This is my, my biggest complaint about the app that obviously you don't know what mistakes you make and you can try again and aim for perfection. So if you do really well, it works really great because it gives you a high score and that's a good feedback for you that you did well. You can go to the next one, but if you didn't do so well, then you have to basically figure out by yourself what you did wrong and try to fix it yourself. Now, the whole point of sight reading, as I said, is to do as much of it as possible. And this app gives you that purpose because there are so many exercises in it. And even if you don't exactly know where you made the mistake, you're still practicing it and you're trying and you're reading new and new music every single day. And you don't have to look for exercises. You don't have to worry about, oh, is this too hard for me? Is it too easy? Am I supposed to be able to play this? Am I supposed to be struggling with this? So it's kind of a very good resource for finding material that's level appropriate and um, you should be confident that if you are in that specific chapter or level of piano adventures, then you should be able to sight read these. Now, another thing I was testing in the app is what happens if I start counting out loud, because that's what I usually tell my students to start counting when they sight read, because it really helps with the rhythm. And I was worried that if I start counting out loud, it's going to record me and it's not going to perceive the pitch, but it actually did. So even when I counted out loud, I got the same score as when I was not counting. So I don't know how they do that, but they managed to distinguish between the piano sound and human speaking. Now, if I want to listen back to what I played, I can now press play.
and you can listen back to your performance. Now, if I want to play this once again and I want to keep the metronome on and maybe make it a little bit faster, I can increase the speed to maybe 100 and put the metronome on. If you unclick the metronome, then it's going to follow you. So it's going to try to predict from this from the notes that you play where you are in the score. As you could see, it was the, the little marker was moving when I was playing. But if you put it to the metronome, it's going to rely on the beats. So let's see what happens now. Now you can see I got a 100% score. Using a metronome is always going to be easier, but you shouldn't use it all the time because then obviously you don't develop an even pulse inside you. So it's a very good way to check yourself if you had rhythm issues, like if you get 60% or 20% for your rhythm, then put on the metronome and try to stick with it. And then when it goes a little bit better with the metronome, then take off the metronome and try it by yourself, holding the tempo very evenly. So this is my little overview of the app. I think it's a very valuable resource, especially because it's free. So it kind of substitutes seven or eight books. I, I think it's eight books inside. Be careful with the drawbacks, as I said, that obviously you need to figure out your mistakes. But all in all, I think it's a very good app to use and all of you who are beginner pianists should download it and use it because it's a lot of exercise in it. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about the app, leave your questions in the comments below. See you soon.